I started my small business from the comfort of my bedroom and I'm going to let you know how you can do the same. Hi friends, my name is Monica and if you don't know me, I own a small business called Monica's Collective. I make handmade goods including hand poured candles, hand sewn accessories like tote bags and pouches and scrunchies. I design stickers, hair accessories, stationery, apparel. And although this is really awesome, really cool and I'm really proud of myself for it, it did not start out this way. When I started Monica's Collective, it was actually called Monica's DIYs because I really did not think it was going to be an actual business. I did not believe in myself, I did not have the time and so I just called the first thing that came into my head Monica's DIYs because I was DIYing things and they were mine so Monica's DIY and I started that as an Instagram page in my childhood bedroom in 2019. I have a whole YouTube video talking about how I was in a 12 foot by 12 foot room in my parents house my childhood bedroom i had a queen bed in there which took up most of the space and then every other crevice of my room was fully dedicated to starting this small business that i didn't even know was a small business at the time it was right out of college i didn't have my own space i was working a full-time corporate job we were on the verge of a whole global pandemic i had no experience with growing on social media and i had never done this before ever and i didn't know anyone in my life who had done it so the cards were slightly stacked against me in different ways but here we are five Five years later with a thriving small business side hustle and so i absolutely know you can do the same but i get it there's some very valid constraints that keep us from following our small business dreams and each of those constraints falls into one of five categories lack of time lack of space lack of capital lack of motivation and lack of confidence now let me let you in on a little secret none of those constraints are actually holding you back and here's why all right first let's start with overcoming the lack of time tell me about how you're working a full nine to five corporate job that is two hours away from your home. Tell me about how you're a full-time mom or you're a full-time caretaker of a family member or how you love dedicating your time and energy to hanging out with friends and going to new restaurants and traveling and trying new things. No matter how much you do want to start a small business, other things are just eating up your time and you just can't find an extra second in the day to even think about a small business. With all these different things going on in our lives that we find important to us and that we want to commit time to, the most important skill to learn is prioritization. If you have 20, 30, 40 priorities in your life that you're treating equally as important throughout every single day and you're balancing trying to get everything done all the time, you're bound to fail across all of your different priorities that aren't actually priorities because everything is your priority. In order to start a small business and be successful, you have to bump that journey up to a higher priority than it probably currently is at. And doing so might actually be very uncomfortable, especially in the beginning, because we all have the same 168 hours in a week and we all choose to spend those 168 hours in different ways and the first thing you need to do is take away time from some of the activities you currently have in your life and dedicate that time towards building a small business the easiest way to do this is to time block so in a google calendar or whatever sort of scheduling or calendar tool that you use block out every single hour of your life you don't have to do this forever this really helped me in the beginning to actually find out where i'm spending the most of my time you might think you're spending most of your time at work. You might think you're spending most of your time doing one thing or another thing. There are plenty of apps that really help you figure out exactly how much time you're spending on different apps on your phone. You can log in every single action that you do and put it into different categories. But getting a grasp of how you are actually spending your life, which is crazy to think about is really important. A lot of us at one point or another find out we're spending so much time doing things that we hate or doing things that are unnecessary, but we just didn't realize <laughs> that all of that was in our life. And the moment you realize that that's happening is life-changing. That's time you take back to yourself and put it towards something that actually matters to you. Whether it be you didn't realize you were spending too much time scrolling on social media, you didn't realize how much time you're spending on Netflix or hanging out with people you don't even really like. And now you have time to put towards your new priority, which is is starting your small business. Another way to overcome your lack of time constraint is to have patience. If you're the kind of person who has a lot going on, you have to really be patient with growing your small business because it won't happen overnight. Most people cannot quit their full-time jobs and can't quit every sort of responsibility in their life, drop everything and go and start a small business. And so you shouldn't expect yourself to do that. Most of us slowly figure out how we want to start a small business. And it's important to remember this because sometimes when starting a business, it doesn't just take a week, a month, a year, two years, it could take a while. Patience is key because you don't want to give up. Know that all the little bit of time, the five minutes here, the one hour here every week is adding up. It's contributing to your success in a small way. There's so many small businesses that fail because the owners of the small business felt that 
they just put in too much time and they weren't getting anything out of it. But in reality, they just needed to be a little bit patient, stick with it for a little bit longer and success was right around the corner. For myself, when I was starting my small business, I was working full time going to the office Monday through Friday and I would dedicate the hours of 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. every single day for a solid five or six months to growing my business, coming up with ideas, sitting with myself and just brainstorming, actually making the products, building my social media following. I came with a good amount of sacrifice, but it was such a high priority for me and I scheduled my life around it so well that it ended up working out. You absolutely don't have to follow the same path that I did, but just know that if you schedule, reprioritize and have patience, you will overcome the constraint of your lack of time. Now let's talk about overcoming the lack of space. Having started my business in a 144 square foot childhood bedroom, you do not need to convince me that the constraint of space is truly debilitating for an aspiring small business owner. I truly struggled. And even now that I have my own full crafting room, I feel myself purposely holding myself back because I just don't want my space to be any more cluttered than it already is. However, friends, I think I have found a solution to this lack of space constraint, and that is 3PL. 3PL stands for third party logistics. I had not heard about this concept until recently, and as soon as I heard about it, I went into a deep dive research of exactly what it is and how I can use it. Third party logistics providers do exactly what it sounds like. They take all of the really frustrating down in the trenches, small business stuff, like worrying about space for inventory, filling customers orders, maintaining shipping supplies. We take all of those logistics that are impossible to handle in your own bedroom and we hand it off very kindly to the professionals, the 3PL providers to get the job done elsewhere. You don't have room for inventory in your studio apartment, use a 3PL provider's warehouse. You don't have the space to keep shipping supplies in stock with all the different types of boxes and packaging materials that you might need, and you don't have time to learn how to ship out orders, let a 3PL provider monitor, track, fulfill, ship out every single one of your orders from their own warehouse. You can literally be in bed on a Tuesday night eating your takeout in your bedroom, receiving orders from your customers on your online e-commerce site and without even batting an eye this third-party logistics provider receives a notification from your Etsy integration your Shopify integration to your online shop that says that you got an order and they will completely fulfill it by picking all the inventory from their warehouse and packaging it all up nicely and including your business card and custom freebies just as you requested to be included in every single shipment and it gets shipped out via one of the mainstream shipping providers all while you are finishing up your Netflix show and tucking yourself into bed in a clutterless bedroom now as heavenly as that sounds, it is very important to find a 3PL provider, obviously, that you trust and that's affordable and that definitely gets the job done. One 3PL provider that I have had the pleasure of starting to work with is called eFulfillment Service. eFulfillment Service is an award-winning 3PL provider that has been in business for over 20 years, helping small to medium-sized businesses grow with an insane customer satisfaction rate of 99%. 99% guys. They're an all-in-one e-commerce fulfillment service provider, which means that they handle everything from what I was talking about before with warehousing and storing your manufactured or handmade products to save you space in your own home. To the pick and pack service of finding and packing up products from the warehouse to be shipped off to expecting customers, to doing inventory management and even returns if it's necessary for the customer and notifying you if your stock is running low. As a small business solopreneur for the past five years, let me tell you all of those tasks are extremely time consuming, space consuming, sanity consuming, energy consuming, and it is so worth it to have someone else kind of take the reins on that. I am speaking to you all and to myself when I say we should let the professionals take it from here and stop struggling on our own. After a ton of research and interacting with the company, I definitely recommend eFulfillment Service as your 3PL provider. Also, eFulfillment Service has zero hidden fees, no order minimums, and they also offer really seamless integrations to your Shopify store, Squarespace store, Etsy, etc. So you don't have to do too much setup when you start using their services. And one little tidbit that I love is that they are also family owned and operated, which is the best. They offer so many other services that would be impossible to list out in just this one video. So you'll hear me talking about them all the time afterwards. They definitely seem really willing to work with your custom needs and wants. So I definitely recommend. 
If you want to try out e-fulfillment service like I am, you can actually get a four week risk-free trial of EFS service if you use the link in my description. You can request a quote through the link and they will get back to you on pricing, but you still get that four week risk-free trial. Try it out, see if it's for you and your small business and your space and time constraints, because I know it's for me. Thank you so much to e-fulfillment service for sponsoring this video. 3PL will definitely solve a lot of your space constraints and space issues. 3PL will also clear up a lot of mental space. When you start a small business, it's really hard to start thinking about all the different things that you need to be thinking about constantly. Did I forget to pack this person's order this morning? Wait, did I forget to include a business card in that shipping box? This customer needs to return something because they requested a different size. Did I take care of that yet? I don't hear too many people talking about the space capacity that you need to have in order to be a small business owner and using 3PL or some sort of service, even using an organizational tool like Notion or Milano, just to get all the mental things out of your brain and onto something else will definitely help you with your mental space constraint. But I do want to mention with 3PL, it's obviously awesome, but it does come with a monetary expense, which is definitely something to consider. It can definitely be affordable if you work with the right provider like e-fulfillment service, but it is an expense nonetheless. And that brings me to to the next constraint, which is the lack of capital. Now I bet you're like, girl, finally, you're talking about this because this is a big one. I feel like there is a huge misunderstanding between small business owners who are really successful and don't really share too much about how they got started and small business owners who are attempting to start and realize that there are expenses involved. Let me tell you, there are definitely really affordable ways to get started, including starting off with products that don't cost you as much. If your really great small business idea is a product and it'll cost you a lot to produce or manufacture or hand make, maybe start off with something a little smaller. With the ultimate goal of eventually getting there, to that really big, amazing, kind of expensive product, start with maybe something else that could get you on your feet running so that you can build your way up in capital to get to that other product and then even more products after that. Speaking of multiple products, start with one or two or three, a low number, because some of us have the opposite problem and we have a lot of things that we wanna go ahead and create and sell and make. But because it costs a lot to make a huge range of products, we end up just not starting at all because we can't do everything that we want. One of the hardest things as a small business owner, especially as a creative small business owner, is to kind of like constrain yourself creatively and only put things out one at a time because of other constraints you have. But it's so necessary and just know that you're not giving up on those other products. You're just waiting to release them until the right time, until you can afford to, until you have the space and the time and etc. There are also other costs that are not monetary that you will need to consider the true cost of starting a small business, I guess. The cost of you might not get to see your friends on the weekends because you are running a small business. <laughs> the cost of being tired all the time. The cost of really no one in your life understanding what you're doing. <laughs> but there's such simple ways to resolve that. There are huge communities online. My community is an amazing one, if I do say so myself, where we all support each other and kind of share our different experiences in the comments. Know that you don't have to fully give up your life, give up sleep and healthy eating and healthy habits in order to start a small business. There's a really good balance you can make. We talked a lot about that in the beginning part of this video. But if you just imagine your goal, really successful business, you're the CEO, you're the founder, just know that me and all my small business owner friends that I know, know that the cost is worth it in the sense that you are definitely struggling for a really good reason and you'll eventually get there and it won't be as much of a struggle as when you initially started. If you're saying, that all sounds great, but I only have $5 in my pocket and I really just want to start a small business. Think about how you can make a product and sell the product with just $5. If that's literally all you have, whatever the monetary amount might be, say it's like $100 or $1,000. When I started my small business, I started with just scrunchies. They cost me about $1.50 to make and I would sell them for three or $4. In hindsight, I should have been selling them for way more money, but that's that's a different conversation. <laughs> My ultimate goal wasn't to create a business of just selling scrunchies. I wanted to do so much more, but I started with that one product because it was cheap to make and I knew I could make a profit from it. Profit is such a big concept. You don't just wanna sell things at a price that you think customers will pay. You need to make a profit in order to keep your business sustainable and to keep it growing. Whatever product, whatever service you're selling, budgeting is so important. If you're starting with $100, after you sell all the things that you've made, including shipping costs, including overhead, 
subscription costs and all the other extra little costs that you might have. After you've sold everything you invested in with that first $100, your bank account better have more than $100 back in it. And that comes with knowing that your products, your services, are worth something. They're worth a lot. And you shouldn't sell yourself short. Just because you're getting started and just because you maybe don't have experience in this field doesn't mean you deserve any less. And the last thing on overcoming lack of capital is treating everything that you are purchasing, that you are expensing for your small business as an investment. You're gonna get it back. If you believe that and make smart business decisions, only purchase things that you know will be useful. Don't go too big yet. Only purchase things that you can afford right now. And maybe sometimes even purchasing the more expensive option knowing that you will get more return on that material, that supply, that product, whatever it is, if you were to go with a more expensive option. By thinking in that way, you're definitely going to make your money back and you'll have more capital to grow with your second launch. Moving on to overcoming the lack of motivation. Now, if you don't wanna start a small business, then don't start a small business. But I know a lot of people out there who do wanna start it, but they just kinda lack the motivation, the daily motivation to do the little annoying, frustrating tasks that will get them to the part where they actually like. The part where you're making money, the part where you're talking with customers, the point where you have your own shop. But discipline is always such a bigger indicator of success than motivation is. Motivation comes and goes. For example, when it is cloudy outside, I have zero motivation to do anything. Zero. When it's sunny, I'm motivated. I'm a go-getter. I want to do it. But deep down, my actual goals are exactly the same on a cloudy day and a sunny day. But my mood just shifts and different things happen and the motivation ebbs and flows. That's why discipline, which is knowing that you in this moment don't really want to do something, you're kind of annoyed by it, you don't really want to do it, you're kind of lazy. But knowing that those are very surface level thoughts and that deep down you actually do want to do this thing because it'll lead you to a better future, it'll lead you to a future goal. And then actually doing that thing, that's discipline. And that's what's going to get you started and continuing to go on to like attract of success as a small business owner. What helps me with this is having an accountability partner, telling my friends and my family different goals that I have, knowing that they are going to check up on those goals. <laughs> Whenever we text or chat, I know that they'll bring it up and I'll be like, oh shoot, there is someone holding me accountable because they know what I want in life. And so your small business goals aren't just like in your head, you've spoken them out loud and other people are aware of them, especially in the times when you don't really feel like doing it every day. And also keeping track of your successes is actually a really good motivation booster and discipline booster. By celebrating a win of you just creating your Instagram handle or you purchasing your first domain name, you should celebrate small wins like that and celebrate them as really big successes because it'll get you feeling really good. It'll get you really excited to feel the next success and the next win and get you really motivated and disciplined to go and do whatever you need to do to get to that next win. Another thing that helps with lack of motivation is setting realistic expectations. Starting a small business isn't all rainbows and sunshine. There are going to be a good amount of bad moments, a lot of disappointing moments, really sad moments, failures, and that's the point when it's so easy to give up and to just be like, eh, this wasn't for me, and then you end up regretting that you quit later on in the future. We don't want that. Set your expectations to be that you're gonna get started, you're gonna be really excited, and then you might fail. But that's okay, because you can keep going, you can work on a new product, you can work on whatever's next, and you can try again. And you can try again and again and again. If you expect to succeed immediately, you expect to get a certain amount of followers after a certain amount of time, you expect that certain people will buy from you, you expect a certain amount of people to show up on your site on launch day. If you have really, really high expectations, which is really easy to do since social media really raises all of our expectations super high, then you're not gonna have the motivation to keep going. Basically, stay positive, stay optimistic, and just keep going. And going along with that, we have the very last constraint, which is overcoming lack of confidence. Oh, this one is tough. Because when you're not feeling confident, there are a lot of times when no matter what anyone else says, you will not believe them. You're just not feeling good about yourself. And as someone starting a small business, especially as a solopreneur, if you're not feeling good about yourself, you're not feeling good about your business, you're not feeling good about the things you're creating, the things you're producing, you might be thinking to yourself, like, who am I? I'm not that special. I don't have the means to start a small business. I never got an education in business. I don't have a cool enough personality to be a small business owner. A big one is getting over the embarrassment of posting on social media about your small business. I dealt with this a lot 
because I was not someone to like really post on Instagram all that much, but I knew it the best of all the social media platforms. So when I started posting about my small business, I was really nervous about what my peers would say about it if they were talking behind my back to their other friends about like how weird it is that Monica's starting a small business. And when I started YouTube, that was even worse because I'm putting myself out there. I'm wondering if people are just like, I don't know, laughing at me all the time. But the best way to overcome this lack of confidence is to prove to yourself that you are cool and you are successful and you are a small business owner. You are a good content creator. Affirmations work great, manifestations work great. But by actually achieving those things, seeing it down on paper that you made a certain amount of sales or seeing on Instagram that you gained five more followers today, putting in the work and seeing the results is the biggest confidence booster. I now have a successful small business side hustle. I have growing, thriving social media accounts. And now I'm like, if they are laughing at me, let them because it's working because I'm succeeding. <laughs> Another thing that really helps is talking with other people who understand what you're going through. Small business communities are like the best communities I've ever been a part of. <laughs> there are a number of YouTubers who really foster great small business communities. I'll put all my recommendations in the description, but there are so many supportive people who are trying to do exactly what you're trying to do, but not in a competitive way, in a like, let's do this together, let's rant about all of our different customer interactions, let's lift each other up and give each other recommendations and suggestions and advice. And that's the kind of content you wanna be consuming as a small business owner and communities that you want to join. And last on overcoming your lack of confidence is literally fake it till you make it. Like just, just fake it. You should create your website product descriptions, your Instagram captions, your tweets, as if you are already a very successful business owner and you've made a bunch of sales. If you speak in that way, if you think in that way, like I'm already successful, which you are for even starting, for even like considering starting, you are successful. If you think in that mindset, which is technically faking it, you'll eventually get to the point where it's true and you are making a ton of sales. And there are a bunch of people who look up to you and are interested in your products and are interested in learning more about you and your business. If your lack of confidence is the real constraint that's holding you back, I guess the real answer is that you don't need confidence to start a small business. All you gotta do is pretend you do. <laughs> As a small business owner who started about five years ago, I had every single one of these constraints at one point or another. In fact, I've had all five of these at the same time, multiple times throughout the past few years. And I've somehow managed my way around these constraints and almost used them to my advantage. I included a lot of tips and tricks in this video, but if you have any other questions or any other suggestions as other fellow small business owners, put them in the comments. I know it's really easy to complicate the endeavor of starting a small business and getting the ball rolling and and putting yourself out there, but you should take it one step at a time, one day at a time, one issue, one problem at a time. And if you're sitting in your bedroom right now thinking about all the different reasons why you can't do it, I think you can. And you just have to believe in yourself and deal with your different constraints in the most efficient ways that you think you wanna deal with them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to eFulfillment Service for sponsoring. Definitely check them out in the description. They will save your small business life quite literally. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.